Yeah. Yes, we are live. <laughs> and you know, we are live. So often I hear it saying myself and other people <laughs> as though <laughs> it's something new. We are always alive. But now with this online changing things, yeah. we often say, yeah, we are live. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, and, and that brings me in the subject, Karina, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about it, and I believe it, it is oh, because yeah. you announced yeah. it. Yeah. Is that uh, what is it? What, what can Earth shows us about life and that? And that is part of nature, that is part of circling that is part of generating creating mm -hmm. and when we were seeing what what would we talk about and then this theme came up life and that i can remember that last week as a sudden i was doing another facebook live on my page and as a sudden this theme came across and it was like, yeah, there are a lot of restrictions now with mm -hmm. the, the Christmas parties, with yeah. the New Year's parties, with everything. And so many people are falling down nearly, are going down as, oh no, all these traditions, we can't do them. We can't be with family as though the importance of the tradition, because mm -hmm. we need the tradition to stay alive. And yeah. when we don't have this tradition, ah, we can't breathe. We aren't alive. And especially more for this, I'm brought up in the Catholic tradition mm -hmm. with the Christ is born, Jesus is born. And with Christmas, everything goes around this Jesus born and he, he died afterwards in the name of saving people. So everything is going about the life of Jesus. But what is that? I was really sitting with that energy. What is the tradition to celebrate the life the, the Christ is born? Mm -hmm. And yet, do we celebrate our lives? Couldn't it be also, perhaps this year, that we can see and choose that there is so much more to celebrate in this time yes there are people dying but that's every day of the year people yeah. dies and every day of the year people are born mm -hmm. and yeah. do you know something that pings now is i hear it often say in the family it was when there were older people and there was one of the younger pregnant of the, the younger women they said oh yeah. you will see it can be that the older one will die to give life to the younger one as saying there is a circle of life when there is a newborn there will be another one dying as though it wasn't that significant as oh, there will somebody die because there is coming a new one. No, it, it was more normal, as we can speak of yeah. normal, as yeah. we can speak of normal. How is it in your world with what did you grow up about life and death? Uh. Yeah, death was there on the one hand because there were family members that died being old. 
but it was also non-existence and uh, what I'm getting is, is my father being a physician for physicians death is uh, basically they lost what they are here for they lost that struggle they lost that fight and are they really here for to keep people alive? I'm thinking back about a monologue that Zach Bush did that touched me deeply because he's also certified as a hospice physician. And he, as a hospice physician and, you know, having all the knowledge, he pulled back people and revived them. And the people mm -hmm. then chided him and said, why the heck did you pull me back? It, I was good to go. And so really looking at what you said, that circle of life, there is the birth, that transition into this life, and then death is the transition out of this life. Why is death as a sudden so bad when it mm. is in a way exactly a birth into another space? Do you know there was an energy when you were speaking about the physician and yeah, the, that I, I could perceive there an energy of failure and could it be that that is already seen as failure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, on the one hand, we talk about we are not living forever. We have that wishful thinking to be immortal. But do we truly want to live forever? Yeah, Karina, but when that is equal failing then we aren't going to start okay. to live because when we start to live then we are going towards our failure position got you yeah i can uh i can absolutely see that and on the other hand uh you know to some extent i worked in as a hospice volunteer and i have no point of view about death Death yeah. is, for me, as much a transition as birth is. Yes. And if I look back at history, I'm not quite sure at what point the attitude towards death changed. Because death was part of life. People were so connected to the earth, they saw this as the cycle that you are born spring and then there is the winter, there's death. And it was okay, it was normal. When did that change? And I have to say, even though we may consider death as a failure, we had a way more natural attitude towards death because like last year when we had the flu and somebody died of the flu yes it was sad and there was all the the grieving uh, and and all of that but th there was never that being forced upon you that you are responsible for the life of somebody else by wearing a mask yeah. Where did so that sudden fear of death come from? Why is the death of COVID different, differently valued than the death of influenza? And we, uh, who is impelling the fear of death of COVID mm -hmm. on us? Yep. Because now it's not only I am afraid of the death. No, I am afraid of the death of COVID because they impelled also that it is really an ugly death. It's suffering. It's ugly. 
it's something you don't want. It's something you have to, to be afraid of. And a death by influenza with pneumonia or any of the other that's, things is not ugly. Um, that's, that's Karina. That is yeah. something that, that looks like a lot of people forget. It's only the, the, the indoctrination nearly. Mm -hmm that's happening yeah. and something because you were questioning when did it change and it is as I can perceive for many many years yeah perhaps lifetimes it changed already and I'm not sure how um, those people or where it is but I can remember that I saw a documentary about celebrating death, celebrating the death. Mm -hmm. And that made an impact on me when I saw it and it made sense yeah. while they celebrate and honor, not of not in honoring of we can't forget them and we have to make them really significant, but the honoring that is the space of something life. new. Yeah, life and something new. And does earth, does earth the same where things die? It is a contribution for what mm -hmm. can be generated there and show up as something new, as something different. Yeah. I think the, uh, in, in the way I look at, the earth doesn't make birth or death significant. It's just part of the cycle. And I recently came across uh, several people posted the same thing that the elephants uh, went to the house of somebody who rescued them uh, in Africa and uh, on the day he died and then exactly a year later. Now, first of all, animals are aware of energy, which most humans are not aware of energy. And what... Uh, let, let me backtrack a moment. What was stated in the article is, is, is that they were grieving the person's death and they are grieving their own species if somebody in their own species dies. But is that a human overlay over something that the elephants actually celebrated the life of that person, that they celebrated the life and celebrating, uh, you know, we, we see in celebrating the big party and, and all of that, but yeah. what if celebrating is actually the fact of honoring, mm. of acknowledging what that person, what that animal has accomplished what it has done, how it has contributed, or you know, in, in any which way, both the person as the animal. What if we have a, a really unique way that is somewhat skewed? Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's also, if I cannot acknowledge a life lived well, and if I'm afraid of death, am I just alive or am I living? And, <laughs> yeah, this, as we say, we started, I'm alive, we are alive. Mm -hmm. Are we really living our life yeah. or are we yeah. believed by all those judgments and, and 
conclusions and definitions and whatever and yes and i'm gonna pull it a little bit further uh mm -hmm. stop me if we go too far <laughs> but i became aware also it was something really smacking me nearly in the face and it is a capacity i have is talking with entities and being present and entities as the energy because everything is energy mm -hmm. and we are we have a body and they don't have yeah. a body at that time but it opens me also like wow what is that really the fear of that because we are infinite so we never die it is such a joy this communication with those energies and there is no difference so why would i be afraid of that knowing that there will be someone else who can communicate with me also because i'm doing it at that time so there is no yeah it was it, it brought me into another aspect of that and knowing that i can say karina really it is brutal honest with myself there is still there is still a little a little resistance i i don't want to call it a fear but a little resistance to die <laughs> not willing to die whatever and yeah where this came from was with the yeah, the vaccines they will come about covid etc etc it was a no way i don't want it but there i could catch the resistance mm -hmm. saying this no way from where it comes it's mm -hmm. not from yeah it is really from that resistance what if this is required that i am willing that i'm willing go and leave my body die mm -hmm. or consciousness or the expansion of consciousness on earth am i willing to do this and it was with that willingness because it, it is it yeah. It's not a lying and agreeing. It's not changing my choice to get the vaccine or not, but it's that willingness that gives me the space of coming out of separation. Yeah. yeah. Now I I fully I fully agree with you. And first of all, uh I think it was Albert Einstein his, uh, who said that energy never dies and we're energetic being and how far is that awareness that used to be the case. They wouldn't have called it energy, but you know, we, we built that whole thing around how to remember and how to almost, uh, remember them on their day of death and how for beginning November, you at least in Europe, you go to the grave, you decorate the grave. And there, there is this whole mm, celebration, ritual, whatever around it. And the one thing that I am keenly aware of and also probably based on my own life experiences is how much do rituals that we repeat year after year after year actually keep us on, on our autopilot. Yeah. Because yeah. We, we go unconscious uh, around it. It's There is no more, you know, you talked about Christmas, but are we truly celebrating the birth of Christ 
Or are we going into the buying frenzy if and feeling guilty about what gifts and what were the, the right gifts and, you know, name it, uh, that is has crept up during Christmas? That's Karina. It's with the oldest generation, they will celebrate this bird. But 90% perhaps is, it is tradition, not even tradition. It is what we do. Yeah. We, we put the tree up, we go shop, 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 because we have to give presents. And the more and the now, better. That, that. And I can't give a lesser one than that one or a smaller one than that one. And there, it's all not only an automatic pilot, but so much contraction, yes. so much of everything. There is fear, there is anger, there, there is sadness, there is everything is there mixed. Mm -hmm. because of Christmas. And now, for me, it is, we have this freedom of not, the, we don't have to go with these traditions because we can't gather. We and can't come together. It <laughs> so is, what a freedom it, is that? It is a possibility to create different traditions. And it's a possibility to throw the word tradition out and choose every single year. How do I want to be yeah. during that time? Who do yeah. I want to be? Where do I want to be? Uh, and so there is a new choice every single year. What if that would be possible? Yeah. And, and I'm also keenly aware saying that because that just popped for me, then I'm not in control because tradition allows me to control things because that is how you do it step by step. And allows you to judge the hell out of you. <laughs> how well yeah. do you follow tradition? Yes. Yeah. It's control, it's judgment. And uh, in the summer here also, I saw it. Pain people had about and the judgment because there are a lot of traditional um, acts. Or, yeah, several things. Too much, but not one could go on because it's gathering people together and it, it mm -hmm. couldn't. And it yeah. was also, oh, and now the traditions, and they were already uh, less popular with the younger ones. And it was a shame that they don't honor the traditions and that they go, don't go with the traditions. And they, yeah, you know what it is. So yeah. this year, there weren't any. And it mm -hmm. was in the start of the season, it, it was like sadness, a really a big sadness in the mm -hmm. world here, in, in their worlds. And up my, the end of the summer, no one spoke more about it because it was already normal that the traditional parties, the traditional acts or whatever it was, couldn't go. Mm -hmm. And with traditions, when they say it, oh, these young people, they don't honor us and they don't respect the culture and they don't this, don't this, don't this. But traditions, aren't they also in life to keep everything in place? Mm -hmm. So you can't go anywhere. There isn't an evolution. There isn't an expansion. That is definitely, in, no matter which way uh, and which part mm. of life you look at, there is that attempt to control everything, to be in control of your life. And is 
being in control of my life truly allowing me to be alive to my point of view is joy no. that exuberant joy to do that unexpected thing uh just because i feel like yeah yeah and also when you when you see in nature when there is a tree near another tree dying the one that is living it doesn't change in it it doesn't stop living it doesn't go down it's it's like yeah, yeah it's in allowance that's what's happening there but even i'm aware of what's happening there i still contribute to that tree in whatever way it is and i don't stop to shine even when there is another tree that wants to go higher than me and come over me it doesn't change because i am who i am said that one tree and it goes with whatever it wants and chooses to go mm -hmm. there is yeah it's so amazing to to see really and receive the allowance the space of allowance honoring yeah. and nature has an incredible space of allowance yeah and also at the same time as you mentioned an incredible space of contribution it is willing and contribution is not me donating money that somebody uh, can have this, that or the other. Contribution is, uh, there is a, a back and forth. It's almost like the infinity sign. It's simultaneous. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an energy exchange. Uh, that has nothing to do with me gifting money slash energy to somebody who has no money slash no energy. Yeah. Where is, you know, where are we missing this uh, back and forth? And yeah. is that part of being alive? Or yeah. is that part of living? Yeah. 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 If the I'm contribution, alive, yeah. How much can I do this dance of back and forth and gifting yeah. and receiving? If I'm living, it's part of the whole thing. Yeah, and that gifting receiving is also with the sun, for example. Mm -hmm. The sun, it shines. Mm -hmm. That's the gift. And yeah. it receives. Yeah everything around in the universe whatever it is yeah. and it doesn't stop when when i'm not receiving the sun the sun doesn't, doesn't say stop oh, shining <laughs> this is my gift yeah. receive yeah. it we're done yeah. it doesn't and, stop me and on the other hand i remember uh one day where I was really sad because of something that had happened and I could sit there and the sun shone into my face and mm -hmm. I was willing to receive the sunshine and just open up to it. Yeah. Yeah. And it shifted my energy. Yeah. You know? That does remember me when, you know, I told already that I was really afraid of every animal. And when I met my partner, he had a, a dog. So the dog went to live with us. It died a few years already, but I can't remember. There was something up also in my world with my children. And, and there was really a sadness in, in my world. And she, she, because she was a girl, the dog was a girl, she approximated me and she was gifting and contributing to mm -hmm. me, talking to me. But because at that time, I was still in a part of that being afraid and so occupied with my sadness that I couldn't receive her. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I pulled her often away, like, ah, it's not the time now. Ah, I don't want to play. I want. So I interpreted it as a, yeah, don't disturb me. Don't bother me. Don't do this. Yeah. And the only thing she wanted to do is contributing and shifting the energy. Yeah, energy yeah. Shifting really and, and opening me up for. Yeah, the happiness that also still was in my world because I am happiness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, and she didn't stop until I got it. And it was a few hours, I can tell you. So the allowance she had, me pushing her away, and the persistence, it's not the persistence of controlling, but from the knowing that what she had to offer, what she had to gift, what she had to contribute was something that, that was needed. Could yeah. change everything. Yeah. So yeah. where and how often do we reject the contribution of nature in every yeah. form? Yeah. Wow. And also the, the, the follow-up question that I, will, that I want to put to that is how much are we looking at everything through our lenses of interpretation of how things are supposed to be instead of really being present with what is and perceiving what is instead of interpreting it. Yeah. This is what it and is that, this is, you know. Yeah. Isn't that also that part? I think it was Gary, I hear him say, Gary Douglas of Excess Consciousness, that says, you can't hear what doesn't match your judgments and your definitions. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So you can't receive also what doesn't match. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So, and then we doing? are already half an hour. Yeah. So how much are we willing to choose more? I am. Me too. And I know uh, even despite saying I'm choosing more, I know I can even choose more and more yeah. and more. There is no end point as such to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, true story. And choosing that more and more and more comes from expanding, mm -hmm. being more, receiving more. Yep. Making your space so expanded that the invitation becomes more yummy, 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 yummy for others. <laughs> also it's yeah. not more 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 of give me give not me give more, me give more, me and i yeah, collect yeah but more of more more and more and more and more and more expanding and more and more and more of you that is the contribution yeah. and the invitation yeah yeah and how much of us dies in expansion becoming more of us so how much is required that we let die of us artificial things to get uh, even alive not, not, yeah okay artificial things uh i mean i would even say how much are we willing to let die of all the definitions and belief systems that we have <laughs> taken on yeah for me, that was the energy, but yeah, it yeah. is. No, it I, is. Yeah. It is. It is. So. It is. Yeah. Where are we choosing to go? And I think it's a great question to sit with right now. Um, more looking at, when I say right now, more looking at the fact that we are the at the end of a calendar here. Mm -hmm. Who do I what did I do this year? 
how did I live this year? How expansive uh, what was I this year? And am I only willing to stay in the parameters that I've lived this year from? Or am I willing to expand even if it's just a bit more? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and to experience that, and then maybe the following year I will expand a little bit more, I will do some more during the year. But to become more and more living instead of just being alive. Yeah. So what is possible? An invitation. Thank you for the conversation. Yes. Yes, thank you, thank you. And we will see each other next week. We'll see each other next week. Uh, Christmas is falling. The holidays are falling really well this year. So we have Tuesdays available <laughs> to have the conversations and not say, uh, yeah. I think I'm going to skip it because it's a holiday. <laughs> yeah, and perhaps we can sing the jingle bells. <laughs> mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe I will reflect on I'm, that. I'm, I'm not sure I want to do this to people. <laughs> oh, you can see I never did it, so I can do this. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.